In this video, I'm going to be going over every single football boot release for the 2018 World Cup and giving it a rating based on the boot itself as well as the colorway A, B, C, D, or F, F being the worst, A being the best. Let's do it. If you guys do end up enjoying the video, don't forget to support it with a like. And if you're new here watching for the first time, don't forget to hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. Also, please keep in mind that all of these grades are based on my own personal opinion. Your opinion might be a little bit different. If it is, don't get mad, get glad. Not sponsored. If you have some opinions of your own that you'd like to share, feel free to leave your grades down below in the comments. With that said, let's get right into it. Let's start with one of the most popular boots in the World Cup, the Nike Mercurial series made up of the Vapor 12 Elite and the Superfly 6 Elite. This of course being the Vapor, they're essentially the same, the Superfly just adds a collar. White flyknit base with orange accents and of course the gunmetal gray Nike swoosh on either side. The entire Just Do A Pack series from Nike does include this country customization that all the pros participate in the World Cup seem to have where they can have their country flag on the back. You can see I have this pair customized with the Brazilian flag that just looks really cool. It is an interesting concept and then of course you have the metallic orange sole plate as well. I know a lot of people were upset about the Mercurials being white. A lot of people that want to wear this style of shoe prefer something a little bit more flashy and given that there is a lot of exposed flying it on the upper that gets dirty very quickly as well which we are seeing now during the later stages of the tournament because obviously players have been playing some of them at least in the same boots that do get dirty we're seeing that now so overall i really like the way that these look but i definitely think that they probably should have gone for something a little bit more flashy so my rating for these is a b the Just Do It Nike Tiempo Legend 7 Elite, my personal favorite boot on the market, and I really like this colorway as well. I think it's safe to say that most people who would be interested in a Tiempo boot in the first place would probably want them to be white or black with subtle accents. And that's exactly what they've done here for this World Cup variation. Pretty subtle as far as accents go, a little bit of light blue in the outline of the swoosh, as well as the flywire cables. I have the laces swapped out because I have not swapped them back yet. And then of course the chrome wearable finish uh, with the blue here on the sole plate. That's not quite as noticeable when you're actually playing them. I think it's clean, simple, looks quite good. I'm gonna give this a B plus. The Magista series made up of the Obra 2 Elite DF that I have right here, as well as the new Obra 2 Elite, formerly known as the Opus 2, the low cut variation with a Kangalite upper. Both pretty much look the same, just that one is low, one is mid, even though they're actually quite different. This is a line that is kind of dying from Nike at the moment. It's been around for pretty much two years now, and there's just not much hype around it anymore, even though it's still a very, very good shoe. All white base, pretty boring as far as design is concerned and that there's not a lot of really design to the Magista as a whole. It's kind of just a solid textured flying it upper, but the red accent always looks good with white. The gunmetal swoosh definitely doesn't look bad. You have the Magista branding on the back, which looks quite cool. And then the red chrome uh, sole play that honestly kind of ends up looking a little bit pink. But overall, given that there hasn't been a lot of hype around this shoe, I think they should have done something a little bit more flashy. So this gets a B minus. And then we have the Hypervenoms, which maintain that all white look, but this time with volt yellow accents and the outline for the swoosh, the flywire cables, and the chrome bolt sole plate. That actually looks really cool in person. I don't mind these at all. I think they're pretty cool looking, obviously very subtle as far as colors are concerned. It's a mostly all white boot, but overall I like the way that these look and just like the Mercurials, I would give them a B. Outside of the Just Do It pack, Nike actually put out some signature colorway releases as well. One being for Cristiano Ronaldo, a very limited one though, only 154 pairs total, which is why I don't have one because they were next to impossible to get. It was a variant of his recently released or several months ago released Chapter 6 CR7 colorway of the Superfly 6 Elite. But instead of the black bits being black, they changed them to white. And the end result I thought was a boot that honestly kind of looked a little bit weird, especially when worn with a white kit. So I wasn't a huge fan of the colorway. I would love to have them being how limited they are, but that particular colorway rating, especially as far as signature colorways for Cristiano Ronaldo go, I'd probably give those a C. And then Nike put out these exclusively to be worn by Neymar during the knockout stages. And I have to say, they look really good. I know there's been a lot of drama around Neymar. A lot of people do not like the way that he's been behaving out there on the field. 
mainly not staying on his feet, but this colorway, I have to say, looks quite good. It's got a combination of kind of yellow and orange within the fly knit weave itself, and then black and white accents, which always look really clean. This cool kind of chevron zigzag pattern that even fills in the midfoot area of the split sole that I think looks quite cool. There's even some reflectiveness in this material as well. And then the chrome stud plates at the base, also accent really nicely with everything going on with this boot. It's simple, but it's got that little bit of flash to it. And as far as signature colorways go, I definitely think that these are very good. I'd actually give these an A minus. Next up, we have the Adidas Energy Mode Pack. Brand new for the 2018 World Cup, not just as a colorway, but as a boot itself, is the X18 line, made up of two different top end models that you'll see on the feet of pro players. The X18.1, which has a lacing system and basically an entirely different upper, and the X18 Plus, which is a laceless boot, again, with an entirely different upper. A lot of people seem to prefer the look of the 18 Plus, which I don't personally agree with. I actually like the little bit of black as an accent on the 18.1. Something about this just looks a little bit strange to me, although I definitely don't think that it's a bad looking shoe. Definitely pretty good overall. I'd rate these probably a B plus. Then we have the X18.1, which honestly, I think this is a really good looking boot. I like the accent of the black. I think it shows off the mesh based design of this shoe really nicely. And overall, I like the color combo as well. So I'm gonna actually give these an A minus. Also brand new for the 2018 World Cup is the next generation Nemesis, the Nemesis 18, of which there is the regular variation and the Messi variation. Now Messi, I think most people would argue, did not have the best of World Cups, but his boots definitely stood out, pretty much being the only bright green ones out there on the pitch. Now this does have a zigzag design, just like the regular orange ones, but it's more, I guess, subtle in that you don't necessarily have the same tonal color change as you do on the orange ones, just the messy branding accenting there in black and the Adidas stripes on the opposite side. Overall, I think it's a good looking boot. They definitely stand out, but nothing too spectacular. I'd give these a B minus. Then for the regular Nemesis, obviously they went with a bright orange. This is what you're gonna see pretty much everyone aside from Messi who wears the Nemesis wearing. Uh, and I think they look quite good. I like the fact that you can see the zigzag pattern. I've always liked that you can see the agility bandages and how they wrap around your foot. This is one of those shoes that even if you're not into tech specs, you can kind of understand what the design is all about. I'm still of the opinion that this is kind of a goofy looking collar. At least you only have the collar on the 18 plus and not the laced 18.1 variation. But as a whole, I actually don't mind the way that these look so my overall rating for these would be a B. And then there's the Preds which are obnoxiously bright in this neon yellow colorway something I don't typically care for but the fact that this is a tribute to the 1998 Predator Accelerator basically the first really flashy shoe ever to come out or at least one of the most notable ones that makes me think that these are really cool. While these have nothing in common with those original Preds the fact that they did bring back this iconic colorway I think is something that's pretty special. So for me, I really like these. The fact that they stand out on TV as well definitely helps. So for me, I'm actually giving this colorway an A. Speaking of that 1998 Predator Accelerator, Adidas has actually put out a remade variation that features an upper that's actually pretty similar to that of the original. It does have the same sole plate and stud pattern as what you find on the modern Predator 18 Plus, but as a whole, I think it's a very cool release. Expensive at $350, but very, very cool, and I'm not so sure that any pros during the World Cup will actually wear them. It'd be really cool if someone did though, but overall, I would also give those an A. Actually, A+, plus. I really like them. And then there's also the limited edition Predator 18 Plus that features the same design as the knockout stage match ball that they're calling Mekta or Mishta. Google Translate is telling me Mishta. I'm not sure exactly what's correct, but I love that it features the same pattern. I think it's very, very cool that it matches the ball. Again, I'm not sure if we're gonna see any pros actually wearing them, but it's a really nice colorway. It's just unfortunate that they are expensive because it's a limited edition release. But as far as colorways go, I'm gonna give those an A. And then there's the Energy Mode Copa 18.1, which pretty much was a fail to begin with, given that Adidas doesn't have any of their major pros wearing the Copa 18.1. Plus they put it out in a colorway where if people are going to buy a Copa 18.1, those people that would be interested in this style of shoe probably don't want bright orangish pink and neon yellow boots. So that in itself is also a bit of a fail. So with all of that taken into consideration, while I do think that they're not bad looking, I just think that they're too flashy for this style of shoe, they get an F. 
Next, we have Puma with the Illuminate pack. Now, Puma made a pretty bold move for the 2018 World Cup in that they launched all new boots, the first of which was this guy right here, the Future 2.1, which I think honestly is a cool design. It's not really that far off from the Future 18.1 that it replaces, but it's a mistake where cool design, weird colorway. That's what Puma decided to go with. And this is a colorway that if you see them in person, I think most people would actually like them. It's very unique. It's got lots of different intricacies with the patterns and little details. I like the fact that it has this kind of color changing effect with the purple, the gray, the green, the blue all in one. And then the teal accenting actually works really nice. The problem is that in pictures and online and even on TV, they kind of just look weird, which is going to turn a lot of people away. So in person, I think they look really good, but my overall rating for this would probably be a B minus. And then there's the Puma 1-1. Horrible name, weird colorway, strange design. This does not have a lot going for it. Yes, it's being worn by players like Lukaku who've had a lot of success as far as goal scoring is concerned, but it's one of those shoes with the design, the color combination, and the whole Puma 1-1 name confusion that just doesn't have a lot going for it. I can't say it's the most attractive boot in the world, especially in this color combo. The color combo, I think, looks a lot better on the Future 2.1 than it does on the Puma 1-1. So my overall rating for these would be a C-. Which brings us to everything else. None of these are very popular, but they're still worth mentioning, and we'll start with New Balance. Just like Puma, New Balance also launched two brand new boots for the 2018 World Cup in the Otruska Pack colorway, which as you can see, is a white upper with red accents. Look familiar? It's almost identical to what Nike did, which was kind of a bad move on New Balance's part. It's a bit of a shame because I really feel like these are the best New Balance boots they have ever put out as a brand, this being the Tekela. Really, really like these. Unfortunately, I did not have a clean pair to show you, so that's why they are black at the front. Normally, they'd be pitch white with red accents, but obviously, once you wear them, they get a little bit dirty. Either way, it's a great looking colorway. It's a great looking boot in my opinion, but from a marketing perspective, it is kind of a major fail in that most people who don't know any better are gonna be watching the tournament and the very few people that are wearing New Balance boots, they end up looking like they're wearing Nike boots because all the Nike boots are white with red or orange as an accent color, just like these. So as far as a grade is concerned for colorways, I have to give these a C plus. This is the second half of the Otruska pack, the New Balance Furon 4.0. Again, a very good boot, hugely improved over all past Furon models, but it looks very similar to the Takala as far as graphics are concerned, and then obviously the white and red coloring for the Otruska pack. A bit of a fail because I think if you're gonna have two separate models, especially being a smaller brand like New Balance, you want them to be distinctively different both in regards to feel, which I think they are, but also in regards to the way that they look, which unfortunately is not the case. These two shoes from the side profile almost look like the exact same shoe, which should not be the case at all. So just like the New Balance Takala, I'm gonna have to give these a C plus. Next, we have Mizuno with their Passion Red World Cup colorway pack in the form of the brand new Rebula 2 V1, an excellent boot, and the Mizuno Morelia Neo 2, which has been around for a little while. They also produced this in the Morelia for this particular colorway as well, but as you can see, they kept things pretty straightforward. It's pretty much a deep red upper with white accents for the Mizuno branding. Really clean, really simple. Doesn't necessarily stand out all that much, but I do like the way that they look. Given that they don't have a huge presence in the World Cup, you probably didn't notice too many players wearing them, but I still really like the way that they look, and I'd give these a B. The only other relevant brand I would say here would be Under Armour, but surprisingly they didn't put out a public release for the 2018 World Cup, which honestly I think was a bit of a mistake, but they did create some custom boots that they posted on social media for Granite Jacka, which actually looked really, really good. You see what those look like on screen. If those came out, I would actually give those probably a B, but because they didn't release, they get an F. And a voice crack. And that concludes my seemingly meaningless grades of all the different 2018 World Cup boot releases. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. If you have any grades of your own for specific boots or perhaps even all of them, leave them down below in the comments. I'd be curious to hear what your opinions are. As far as this World Cup is concerned with boot releases, I definitely don't think that it's the best that any of the brands have ever done, but I don't think that it was bad either. For the most part, I think the boots look pretty good. And I think that's really 
all we can ask for. Every World Cup can't have amazing boots, even though it should. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below in the comments, and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoy the video, and as always, thanks for watching.